Good morning and welcome on this beautiful fall morning. Our, uh, as we worship today, Peace Lutheran and the, um, and the Pendleton United Methodist Church together, we welcome you. We welcome you if you're here every week, if you just happened along and found our site, or maybe you're someone who is making their way back home. We welcome you. This morning is All Saints Day. And so as we prepare for worship, um, maybe you want to take a second and, and light a candle in remembrance of a saint who came before you. Our invocation this morning, the grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And, and also, also with you. Our gathering song this morning is for all the saints.
And now if you would join us in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that, that we are captive to sin and cannot, and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We turn, we turn from, from your, your loving, loving embrace and, and go, go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to the life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your, son, your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. And now join us for the Kyrie. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world. For the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray, O oh God, God, generous, generous and, and supreme, your, your loving, loving Son lived among us, instructing us in the ways of humility and justice. Continue to ease our burdens and lead us to serve alongside of him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And this morning we will read Psalm 43. And we will read it responsively. Give judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked. For, for you, you are the God, God of my strength. strength. Why, why have you rejected me? And why do I wander in such gloom while the enemy oppresses me? Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your sanctuary. 
that that I I may go to the the altar of God, God, and to the God of my joy and gladness. And on the harp I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to the one who is my help and my God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. And now let's join together in our gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to 1 Kings. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe and Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these days, except by my word. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the Wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink of the Wadi, and the I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the Wadi Chirith, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the Wadi. But after a while the Wadi dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there. For I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. She called, he called to her and said, bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as her, her, he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated if you're standing at home. Um, Well, and here. This is a fascinating and fun story, actually. uh, Some of it is very life and death, but Elijah is, of course, the great prophet of Israel. Um, He has many miracles associated with Elijah, not just this miracle of the the, the bread and the oil, but the ravens who feed him, which is always a fun story to think of ravens uh, bringing food to someone. Um, I guess I should say a quick word. A wadi is basically a creek. <laughs> it's a word we don't really use much out here. So he's, he's drinking. He's basically hiding. He's hiding from King Ahab and Ahab's wife, Jezebel. Now, Ahab is basically universally known as the worst of Israel's kings. He's faithless. He's mean. He Well, he marries this foreign wife who brings in foreign gods, and he basically sides with those gods rather than the God of Israel, who has brought the people up out of Egypt and and blessed them in so many ways. He's He's just the worst. I mean, if you hear Ahab's name mentioned ever in scripture, it means terrible. Um... And we get this story, basically partially because of Jezebel, partially because of Ahab, we get the story of Elijah who has been in conflict with this king and calling out the king's injustice, calling out their their faithlessness and and basically saying some nasty things about Jezebel because she, well, she and Elijah do not like each other very clearly. And it gets to this point after Elijah has recently embarrassed them that they are out to get him. So he has to run and hide, and that's what's going on. That's why he's out in the desert and the wilderness. He's hiding in these, these little creek beds and getting fed by ravens and eventually has to leave Israel altogether and go across the Jordan into the land of Sidon, which is, these are not Jews, right? This is a foreign territory. So this great prophet of Israel is hiding. 
And what does he do? He stumbles upon a widow. It's an interesting story because we have this juxtaposition of this foreign woman, Jezebel, and this faithless king, Ahab. And then we have this poor widow who is so poor, so destitute, that she's down to her last morsel of food. And she's a foreign too, foreigner too and has no faith in God. She's a foreign unbeliever just as Ahab and Jezebel are. It's an interesting contradiction because we see that when Elijah, this really quite great man and is known to be great in the land except to the king and his wife, um, encounters this widow who is strangely unnamed. We don't even know who she is. And when, I find it so funny, so against my modern sensibilities, when he walks up to this woman, he doesn't really greet her, just says, hey lady, bring me some water and some food, which seems very abrupt, but I guess that's just what he's used to being introduced by, right? When he comes somewhere, he's a great prophet of God, things happen when he says. Um, but she does, she's generous, she shares, she's willing to even, it seems, to share her last bit of food, even though it means that her son and she will die all the sooner. She is so neglected by her own people that this is the end of her life. That's how she sees it. But God blesses them and gives them this miracle of the meal and the oil. And Elijah and the widow and her son eat. They eat until the rains come again. They eat for quite a long time, and it's a blessing that God gives them. And the thing that is remarkable about this is that God uses this widow, this foreign widow who has no faith in God, to bring a blessing to Elijah, his prophet. And in that way, they are both blessed. Both the widow, both Elijah, they are saved. They are brought physical salvation because they come together and because God uses this widow who has no faith to do God's will in the world. It is a beautiful contradiction to this powerful king and his wife who are faithless and unbelievers and foreigners. They are all the things... They could be viewed as enemies of God. And they are. They're after Elijah. But this widow who should care not for this prophet offers care and is a blessing and is blessed because of it. We see this, these counterexamples in scripture all the time. Um, God is not limited to working within the realms of believers. People outside of the faith are often used by God to bring a blessing to God's people and to all the world. There's so many examples. We can think of the parable of the Good Samaritan, not a person of faith. We can think of the woman at the well. We can think of many kings. God uses foreign kings all the time. King Nebuchadnezzar, King Cyrus, even the Pharaoh become a part of God's plan and purpose in the world. And, God, and they serve God whether they know it or not. God is not limited by territory and by faith. God works in the world beyond our expectations. And that's a lesson I think that scripture tells us time and time again, but we keep forgetting that. We keep thinking that somehow God is limited to us, to who we are, to the limits that we have in our lives, but God is so much bigger than all of those limits. Faith is not a barrier to God. Population, geography, these things are not barriers to God. And I think when we think about that, of course it makes sense. We know that God is bigger than anything we can imagine, but when we are moving about in the world, we just kind of forget that. We're so used to talking about God amongst the faithful that we forget God is in the world beyond the faithful. We forget that God doesn't see the limitations that we see and is bigger and broader than our expectations, even our hopes and dreams. God is bigger than those two. And that's what these stories remind us of, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, time and time again. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or even your faith. God is there in your heart, speaking to you and working through you. And the thing that humbles me about that is that, that I have to remember that I can't assume anything about anyone. Perhaps my enemy, perhaps someone I might see as a villain in the world could be a vessel for God's will in the world. I can't limit God because I don't like this person, because I don't like what they stand for, because I don't like what they're doing to someone else. God is bigger than my prejudices, than my fears, than my disdain. And that is amazing and beautiful. It means that no one is outside of God's love or outside of God's influence. No one is irredeemable. No one, well, doesn't work for God. <clears throat> I started, we, the first lesson we read today was the psalm. And it talks about how the world seems to be in gloom. And we wonder why God has done these things to us. 
And sometimes we get that way, right? We feel abandoned and neglected. We feel lost in the world because it feels like everybody's against us. And I, you know, talking to people, I think we all see that in the world a little bit today. There's definitely a, a gloom in our hearts for, ve- for many reasons. Every week, every day, it seems like there's a new challenge, a new struggle, a new obstacle we have to overcome. It is overwhelming. It is disheartening. It's hard. But when we read scriptures like this, when we remember the stories, we can maybe, hopefully, take a little bit of a little bit of hope, a little bit of faith from the fact that even these hardships God can use for our benefit. Even these struggles, even these challenges can turn into something glorious in God's hands. It's it's those kind of hopes that I think we all need to hold on to these days. To remember that even though we can't see it, we can't see how things will turn out and maybe we even expect things to go wrong and wrong again. But what might seem wrong to us could end up being a blessing to all in God's time. So take heart. Be of good cheer. Be in hope remembering that God can make all things serve God's will. And that will is love and hope and joy for each and every one of us. Yes, we're absolutely passing through a season of hardship, but this too shall pass, and God's light will shine in our hearts again. Amen. Let's sing together our hymn of the day, Rise Up, O Saints of God. If you would join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the the Father Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we'll join in our prayers of intercession. Longing for Christ's reign to come upon us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you invite those who feel most unworthy of love to a seat at the head of your table. Through the humility, vulnerability, and repentance of your church, bring a compassionate welcome to all in need of your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustaining God, 
tried all people of the earth through harsh extremes in the cycles of creation, drought and monsoon, blistering heat and freezing cold. Hold in your mercy all places where lives have been disrupted by natural disasters. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Sovereign God, gather our country around a shared table this week during our national election. Open fruitful dialogue between people of every political party, place, age, and social economic status so that we may discern the common good you desire for us. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Merciful God, protect those whose human dignity has been denied and oppressed in our nation. Raise the voices of those who have been silenced and bring justice where power has been abused for personal gain. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Loving God, accompany those in new and unfamiliar places who need an invitation to community. We pray especially for those who have recently moved to start their first year of college, a new job, or a missionary position in another land. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. For whom else do the people of God pray? Aunt Marie, as she recovers, and all others like her who are sick. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Eternal God, you unite all the faithful in a banquet of your abundance. This day we remember all who now feast in your eternal presence, especially all who have died in the past year. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. This morning I have a, a few announcements. Uh, the first one being that over the next couple of weeks, maybe three weeks at the out, um, we're going to be... Uh, kind of tearing up our sanctuary a little bit and uh, refreshing it. Hopefully we'll soon have the, the paint done and the new carpet in, but you might see some bare floors and things over the next couple of weeks, and uh, things might be a little out of place. Um, but that just means that we're almost there. We're almost done with all of the renovations we've been working on. So uh, pray with us, be with us, and if you're able to come and tear out carpet, uh, keep your eyes on the emails. We'll send out a request for aid. We're going to get a big dumpster for the parking lot so we can just rip it all out and throw it away right here. Um, other announcements I have, I want to say a, a big thank you to everyone who has so faithfully kept up their stewardship during this pandemic. It has meant a great deal to the congregation and keeps us uh, thriving and doing well. Uh, I want to say a special thanks to the Methodists today for their generous contribution and their continued support as well, Those uh, the Methodists of Pendleton. Um, we appreciate having you all as a part of our worship. Thank you so much. And we're very glad to have Patty here with us, too. Um, I, I want to remind people that the Her Hermiston First United Methodist Church is going to have drive-up drive communion today. And um, I would like to invite everyone. Today, of course, is All Saints Day. Normally, if we were having a regular service, we'd come forward and light candles for our lost loved ones. And I encourage you to do that at home. If you've had a chance to get out a candle, to light that as we move into the great Thanksgiving. And if you can, if, you're, if you would like to, you can just type in a name of a loved one you've lost that you'd like to remember today onto the Facebook page. Um, we're not going to be able to read those off, but we can all share and commiserate together in our, our grief and also our joy that they are in God's hands. Thank you so much. We'll move now to the great Thanksgiving. Excuse me. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy 
and rejoice with them in glory. And so with Lois Ramig and all those people that have died in this past year or in our lives, with all the saints and with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. come now to the thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, Wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and praise. praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life in those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and love, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Together let us pray as Christ taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now for our final blessing. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Together let us sing our sending song, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please join us in our postlude, Shine Jesus Shine. Jesus. 